Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to The Bunker. It's time for another voicemail. Today's voicemail is from an anonymous caller. Let's listen to what they have to say. Hey Lloyd, so um, I actually left you a voicemail a while ago about, um, I think it says on your YouTube page, um, how do I debate my friend who's living a double life? Um, so you were actually correct um, about me not telling the entire story about that. So uh, we have been friends, we've been friends for a very long time, um, Recent, just recently, uh, maybe beginning of the year, um, end of the year last year romantic feelings have i i guess you could say have formed um we actually started dating um a few months ago talked about it and things like that uh we get along very very well we never have any issues honestly um i would like you know a potential future relationship here but the only thing that's in the way, of course, as you probably um, know, is the religion. Uh, he knows where I stand. Um, that I'm an apostate, essentially. Uh, yes, essentially, uh, I am an apostate. Um, we have discussions about it sometimes. Um, and... Those discussions um, don't always go very well, I will say. Uh, that's probably the only issue we really have is that. The, that. That's the only thing we argue about or go back and forth about. Um, so I'm just, I'm a bit conflicted because this... Outside of the arguments um, uh, that we have about uh like the religion or organization things like that um outside of that this is probably the um best relationship i've ever been in um i feel like uh we we are actually a complete match um he carries me in places where i fall i carry him in places where he falls we encourage e each other in um every aspect of our lives. We actually just went on a, um, on a trip together a few weeks ago. Um, so I'm a, I'm just like a bit conflicted as to should I stay? Um, I, it's hard because like, he's not a full blown Jehovah's witness. You, you like, He's not a full blown Jehovah's Witness, um, because of course he's dating an apostate, essentially. But still, he wants to defend the organization, defend it, say it's the true religion, uh, things like that. Um, I bring him information, and of course, he uh, starts asking as every Jehovah's Witness, they start asking about the. Um, credibility the reliability and things like that and um he's he said that um you know he he actually told me he was like why would i leave um a religion that has shown me so much love uh for just to be confused out in the world i guess it, it, you could say that um he he asked me where should where should I go where else should where else has the same love where else so it's a bit it's a bit hard um with that that's the only uh, issue that we have um he's a great a great 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 person an amazing person all around um honestly uh literally uh literally my ideal a uh, person to be in a relationship with, um, minus the religion part. If that religion part wasn't there, honestly, we'd probably be on the track to marriage right now. Um, I, I've just, it's, it's sad. Uh, it's, it's sad. I just, um, 
I, I don't really know what to do, how to go about this. Um, I've actually suggested counseling, so we're talking about that right now. So, yeah. Uh, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for calling in again. Yes, this was voicemail 31. Thumbnail here if Tibor is gracious. So we now have a follow-up. And it seems I was correct. <laughs> there were things that were not being said in the original voicemail. And it seemed obvious to me at the time that what we were really talking about was a relationship. And, well, thank you for calling back and <laughs> confirming that I was right, but also obviously sharing more. And, you know, hopefully I can help you hopefully i helped you in the last message i don't know whether i did <laughs> maybe i did maybe i didn't presumably it was a good experience for you leaving the message and getting my answer so maybe it will be helpful for me to reply to this one um where to begin well counseling is excellent there's, there's definitely a need for counseling here um but rather than this being like a, a couple's thing, a couple's therapy thing, I, th I think that um, this is kind of exclusive to you because there's a whole bunch of red flags here, to be quite honest. And I think you said that you felt conflicted. Well, that's coming across loud and clear in the message that you're conflicted. And it's not fun to be conflicted, is it? And conflict is the worst possible foundation for a marriage. You know, you mentioned the M word there. There was one word that you didn't mention, which I'll come to. But you mentioned the M word. And the last thing you want in a marriage is the type of conflict that you're describing where one person believes that he needs to be in God's one and only true organization or you're going to be slaughtered. And the other person doesn't share that view but is interpreted as meeting that fate in the future if they don't convert. Terrible, terrible basis. For a relationship surely you know that so one way or the other this conflict needs to be resolved and to quote from the last jedi <laughs> what was it that luke skywalker says this is not going to work out the way you planned it doesn't sound like it will anyway you describe your are we calling him your boyfriend? We, <laughs> You describe your boyfriend as not a full-blown Jehovah's Witness. One thing I can tell you for sure is that you're wrong in saying that. For all of the difference it makes, your boyfriend is a full-blown Jehovah's Witness. If he is carrying the indoctrination, if he is of the mindset that there's nowhere else to go, which is what he's describing. Where else would I go? How about mental freedom and being able to think for yourself? <laughs> That's where else you go. But if he's still trapped in this idea that he can't view critical information and there's nowhere else for him to go, there's no love like the love that he's experiencing in the organisation, and he's somehow doomed if he goes somewhere else. I'm sorry, he's a Jehovah's Witness. It's not a 50-50 thing. <laughs> For as much difference as it makes, it's a 100% thing. He is indoctrinated. And you can't just unindoctrinate someone. This was the problem in the last message. You, you can't just twiddle a few knobs and get rid of someone's indoctrination. Not how it works. So it's just not looking good, to be honest. And it would be something if anywhere in your message I heard the L word. <laughs> I feel like in a five-minute message, 
I've heard every positive thing that a girlfriend could possibly say about her boyfriend apart from, I love the guy. I love him. That was the one word that was missing. You said everything else. You said, you know, romantic feelings have formed. Um, he's the ideal person to be in a relationship with. We've traveled together. It's the best relationship I've been in. It's not like buying a car, you know. It's, <laughs> this is the best car I've ever had. We're a complete match. That was another one. We're a complete match. Okay, great. Do you love him? You know? Sometimes love is not about whether it's a complete match. Sometimes love is not about, you know, how easy it is to travel with someone. Ultimately, it boils down to, do you love the guy? If you love him, it's possible. And I feel like I'm really straying into agony on territory here, by the way. I apologize, viewers. Um... But if you love him, it completely changes the dynamic. Um, love it makes it possible for you to do a great deal and overlook a great deal. And it's even conceivable that a relationship with religious conflict could be um, meaningful or, or even advisable um, if there's enough love. Love covers over a multitude of sins, as they say. Love can, can achieve quite a, quite a lot in a relationship. Um, ultimately, do you have it or not? And I, I haven't heard that in the message. I wonder to, to what extent you're really in this relationship for you rather than for him or, for, um, or to comply with people's expectations, to be completely honest with you. If you love him... It's possible that with kindness and persistence and, you know, the softly, softly approach, not bombarding him with information, but being there to answer with logic, applying street epistemology, becoming versed in what cults are all about, reading uh, Yaniel Alich, Take Back Your Life, giving yourself the tools so that you can know what to say when these conversations come up. It's possible that you can do a great deal with this particular situation, this particular ideal relationship. But if you don't love the guy, you're not going to have the appetite to put in the legwork. So I think... Ultimately, my advice is make your mind up as to your feelings about the guy. Make your mind up as to whether you actually love him. Never mind whether he is your complete match or not. It's not an algorithm. <laughs> and it's not choosing a new car. It's whether you love him. That's all you need to ask yourself. So you need to resolve that bit of conflict. Um. I do recommend counselling and therapy of some kind because if you're really serious about this relationship, there's going to be turmoil, there's going to be problems that you're kind of knowingly getting involved in. If you are yourself feeling conflicted, that itself would, would indicate that, you know, some kind of therapy or counselling would be advisable. But I would... Um, drop this whole he's not a full-blown JW thing. No, he is. What you need to think about is your boyfriend as a Jehovah's Witness. So that if you get married, as things stand, you are marrying a Jehovah's Witness. I would avoid any kind of wish thinking, any kind of fantasy of, oh, well, I'd be, I'm marrying someone who's not a full-blown Jehovah's Witness or I'm marrying someone who's on the road to awaking up from Jehovah's Witnesses. No, he's a Jehovah's Witness. He's on his own journey. And he will either wake up or not wake up, depending on what's going on in his head. And no one gets to dictate what's going on in his head. We can help him. We can be patient. We can be kind. We can ask the right questions. We can present information 
um, in an organic way, not kind of pushing it in front of him, but as it comes up in conversation, oh, here's what I've found. What do you have to say? Yeah, there's all sorts of things that you can do. I've made videos about, you know, little techniques you can use here and there when you're reasoning with someone who's a family member. Thumbnail here if Tibor is gracious. Um, but ultimately, it's his journey and he will be in control of whether he leaves Jehovah's Witnesses or not. And he hasn't left Jehovah's Witnesses. Not mentally. And ultimately, it only really matters whether he's left mentally or not. And he hasn't. So try to, um, before you think about resolving the religious conflict, I would uh, be addressing your own internal conflict and I would be trying to decide whether you're in this for the long haul or not. So I hope my advice is helpful for you. Again, I'm not a professional mental health therapist or counsellor. You've asked me for my opinion and I'm sharing it. If you would like to ask me something, if you would like to leave a voicemail, the thing to do is go on speakpipe.com forward slash cedars, remembering to indicate clearly if you don't want me to broadcast your message. But that's all I have time for. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.